after so much of science, I'll talk a little bit more about... Now, why should I qualify to talk about that? I'm a, my background is an engineer. I'm a mechanical engineer, which, uh, with a diploma, you just heard that a diploma, at least in those days, was uh, like a master, master's uh, degree uh, that you have now. Now in Germany, they also have bachelor and master's, but uh, when I did my engineering, it was a diploma. So it is somehow, some science is involved in that, engineering science, mainly uh, drives uh, expect from people who work there. When we talk about skills, you know, skills and skills development is very much in the discussion right now. And India wants to have 500 uh, million young people to get them, to have them skills development. We are talking about uh, various levels. We are talking about shop floor qualification. We are talking about, for example, engineers, and we are talking about management level. I am now not talking about shop floor skills, like turners or fitters or those people who work in the workshop. I mean, it's equally important, no doubt about that. And you may know that there's a lot of discussion going on between the governments on introducing this. Uh, in India, we have, well, something between 1,000 and 1,200 German companies. It is sometimes not so easy to say exactly what is a German company because uh, you have the companies which are 100% owned by German uh, shareholders. You have companies with very German names, but Indian shareholders like Bosch. Bosch yeah, is a publicly listed. You can buy the shares, which you cannot in Germany. Of course, everybody would think it is a German company, but it's by the shareholding pattern, it's a more who cares if you are in a bus, whether, first you probably will not care, does the bus have an automatic transmission or not? That's a driver's problem. And if, you had, if the driver may not be interested, is it a, a Foyt transmission? Is it a ZF transmission? Is it Allison transmission? Uh, but these things are so important because they are expected to run 365 days or take a power station. Uh, it has to run 365 days. My company did paper machines, and in that industry, you had to guarantee an av availability of 361 or 362 days out of 365. Because every single minute not running can be extremely expensive. So what I want to say, there are lots of German companies who are in that field of components, but they are not so not so well known as Mercedes or BMW or Audi. German companies in India are, of course, dominating in engineering, in manufacturing, whatsoever, also chemical companies, uh, some of them in software. You probably know the name SAP. Huh? Düsseldorf. SAP headquarter is in Waldorf. That is a place south of Frankfurt. Actually, it used to be a village, but it became popular after SAP grew to the size they, uh, they have grown. Some of them are doing R&D in India. Of course, R&D very often first has to do with uh, information technology. And a typical aspect of R&D is uh, to develop products like Siemens healthcare products, uh, they develop products at the low cost range for the world markets. Because uh, engineering companies typically do the core engineering in Germany, but to a certain extent it is out. So what is what would be, coming back to the main topic, the requirements in general? German companies have, of course, the basic education and the knowledge of the topic. I mean, this goes without saying. This is uh, required everywhere. But then we come to something which ability to solve problems independently. This is something I have observed in India 
is, is not so, so popular. Very often in India, my, my staff then are the engineers, they had a technical solution, but then they said, ah, yeah, yeah, but Germany has to approve it. Germany has to look over it. And, and I said, you are an engineer. You know how to, to design something. What would you do? Ah, yeah, but they should look over it. So there should be the willingness to decide something. Because in, that takes us to one topic, and that's called the intercultural differences. We talk a lot about intercultural differences. Yeah, the typical approach to intercultural differences is uh, or the, most, uh, dis the most popular aspect, so to say. Germans are straight. They come directly to the topic. They don't beat around the bush. Uh, they don't waste time in small talk. Whereas in India, you first establish a contact, and you talk about this and talk about that, and finally you approach the topic. That is right. Uh, but one aspect which I observe very much is this willingness to take a decision and not to wait until somebody else takes a decision. My experience, especially with the public PSUs, public, uh, what is the public state units or public PSU, what is it? Public sector units, yeah. That is extreme. That is extreme. The engineers there are not paid for taking a decision. They are paid for not making a mistake. And they just wanted somebody else to approve. Yeah? That is a, a difference, whereas in Germany you expect even a young man when he starts, a woman, when, he, when she starts working, to have the ability, of course after some getting some experience, to take a decision. Another aspect is, sounds simple, is the ability to clearly and straightforward speak out. Yeah. In the very often people like to, to talk a lot and to talk around it and to use a lot of words. I'll just give you one example, a typical Indian CV. Now I get a lot of CVs. They are simply overloaded. They are typically overloaded. Yeah, people tell what all the, and, and I have sometimes the impression these CVs are available somewhere on the internet <laughs> and uh, they are copied and pasted and again copied and again pasted and uh, some of them, the grammar, I mean English is not my mother tongue but I understand a little bit, the grammar is not even right and it's not necessary, it's not necessary. What is interesting is the basic facts about a person, the basic facts, and what is the experience. And sometimes I read things, strength and weakness. Of course, everybody is hardworking, everybody is dedicated, everybody, everybody is highly motivated. And some say weakness, working hard. I mean, this is just not necessary to write something like that in a CV. So, uh, what I speak clearly and formulate. I had, for example, to train engineers who, who went for service. Now, when you go for a service engineer, uh, you are called somewhere in the world and there is a problem. Some machine is not functioning or is not running. And then that person has to analyze what's going on. Why is it not working? The engineer as such understands it. There's no doubt about that. But to put that into clear words, first to, to differentiate, this is what I found when I came. Yeah? This is what I did. This is, uh, these were the facts and these are the conclusions. That was very often mixed up. The conclusion came at the beginning and then it is a mixture. There was no, no logic in that. Yeah? And this is something which, coming back to the skills and expertise required, is required to be clear in that. Um, another aspect you will, in case you have to do with a German company, India is very strict in observing the system of senior, junior, junior, senior. He is senior to me. How can I back answer him? He knows better. He has to know better. He has 10 years experience. I have five years experience. 
and it is, is quite uh, it's an aspect of politeness but that is not so much not so important yeah? what matters is your skills what you know and whether your skills and your knowledge is based on well on, on knowledge of whether you know about the topic and whether you have the experience and even if you if you have the feeling that somebody who is senior is not right you can openly speak it out these are all these so called um, intercultural aspects and one intercultural aspect is also that if if something goes wrong i mean what 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 is it shit happens things can go wrong now then one has to say oops i made a mistake boom saying that in india is not so easy first thing is somebody else must have made a mistake i probably did not make a mistake now uh, whom could i blame yeah uh, and it's the last thing that some uh, some people don't like to say who that was wrong next time i try to avoid that just say it uh, say it as it is don't try to 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 invent stories and to uh, uh, start talking fairy tales no just say i made a mistake this is also something i have observed is not so uh not so common okay i mean i'm being an engineer i can talk a little bit about engineering of course engineering there are not only engineers in the world there are also other people uh practical training is again something which when we do engineering in germany there's more practical training than you have in in india and uh but it is essential it is essential that you understand what does the guy on the shop floor do that's why i for example had to go through a 6 months training on the shop floor uh, and you have to see you have to know what is happen it's not enough if you just sit on a computer uh, you have to uh, know what what's going on and uh not be afraid of getting oily or dirty hands or oh, foundry yeah foundry is a job which uh, is not very popular so to say because it's hot it's dusty but it's extremely interesting because without uh, foundry technology where do you get all the castings from you can't have a car without any number of castings aluminum gray iron steel whatsoever uh one decides for for example metallurgy one also has to be willing to work on a on a foundry job floor i mean later during a career this will become less and less but in the beginning it is important to understand what is going on i had a, a guy a uh, young man coming a year ago to my office in in delhi he was in his third year engineering came with his, with his father Hey, you want to do an internship by you want to research it ah i'm doing my engineering and i don't know whether it's the right thing i want to be a manager and uh, with you in the chamber of commerce i think i uh, can start i said i won't give you a internship this is nonsense nobody will take you as a manager now finish your studies uh work what you have learned to do and then you will be a manager automatically if you excel in your job if you if you do what you what you should do and what you can do then you will automatically become a manager but don't think that the world waits for you because you have an mba with just an mba what it doesn't mean anything so i hope he he did not who had asked for internship where i could organize an internship in germany and they were really fascinated they were fascinated after 6 or 8 weeks when they came back because they had understood how important uh that topic is germany just a, a little bit the economic background germany as you may know is 
even now, where Europe talks about crisis, and some countries are in crisis, Italy, France, Spain, they had years ago thought manufacturing is not really sexy. Manufacturing is dirty. That is old technology, information technology, and finance.